start my presentation uh, with the story of uh, an anonymous but handsome new employee in Amadeus who has recently <laughs> joined the company and the first thing you task is building brand new equipment. So this API is called the Department API and it has been built together by an artificial intelligence team. Means that we have a lot of historical data in Amadeus, and we are uh, willing to deliver an API which is predicting whether a trip is for business or leisure based on uh, our historical data. Okay, so, so far so good. So, first thing is to start with the documentation. So, we all agree that documentation is super important. So, first task documentation one single sentence for the community. Return the forecast purpose of a trip business or leisure based in a search criteria. Clear. Second task, let's think about the endpoint. Uh, looks like the API is related to flights, and we need flights and working in the area of uh, predictions, and within the prediction, we are returning a uh, departments. So I think, or okay, he thinks, <laughs> that this could be. A uh, very good uh, candidate because in the future, if we have another kind of prediction, this endpoint works very well. So let's move forward. Next thing is about the parameters. Parameters is very basic API for parameters, origin, destination, and the dates. Departure date, return date. <coughs> More or less, names are okay, you know? So far, so good. What about the response? Response is a REST API, so I guess, or he guess, the uh, consumer is expecting a JSON. Since we are returning a prediction, yes, this is what we are doing, returning business, or leisure, and the probability for that to happen. Cool. What about version? So today we are version 1, but tomorrow could be version 2, 3, etc. And he thought, okay, GitHub is using the HTTP header asset. For version in APIs. So if GitHub is doing that, they're great. Let's do the full It's probably the same. So we have to find this together with the Amadeus uh, tag, the version 1 for the time being. Uh, I think we're done. We have the endpoint, parameters, version, everything. So we are ready to deploy it. Let's, <laughs> let's shine. Let's be ready. But not in you can say, hey. So, before we move forward, you should get the approval for, from the API government board. And he said, well, what is that? And he said, well, this is like some people from the company, so you talk to them and say, hey, uh, this API is great, got it. So I said, this is not a big deal. So <laughs> let's go ahead and I'm pretty sure that that would be like, okay, got that. What we are going to see next is the uh, average number of comments the feedback of the people usually provides for a well-designed API. <coughs> Seven comments, two likes. So, and I count the feedback from this new employee. 42 comments, but it's not about the comments. The worst part is not even a single like. Heartbreaking. <laughs> 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 this is how this anonymous employee discovered the importance of having a governance in the company in place. Surprise! <laughs> we have met everyone from Alabama and a developer advocate in Amadeus for developers. So I'm the last one from Amadeus talking, I promise. We <laughs> finished already. And I would like to share with you today my experience in the last two years working with APIs in Amadeus and participating as an active member of the API government. At the beginning, I was super frustrated because my first thought was, who are these people and why do I need a validation from someone that I don't even know to deploy and develop, to develop and deploy my API? But then I realized the importance of the API in the company. So we have an experience of 20 years building APIs. We started with something called Edifax. Does anyone know what is Edifax? Cool. So for those who don't know, it's like building APIs with matrix. It's a, some strange codes, request and response is, let's say, interesting. <laughs> and we moved to SoftXML, 
uh, REST JSON, probably more familiar with you. Recently, we have started to adopt new technologies like protocol, protocol buffer based APIs and GraphQL. So, as you can imagine, having such amount of APIs, just to give you a number, we have more than 2,000 APIs in the Last year, we made 500 billion of requests with our APIs. So, having an uh, API governance in place with such amount of information is critical for us. Because we have many people out there from different departments building APIs, documenting APIs. People that build them now, so, so they are maybe building some specific, a specific API for an airline, for a specific customer. But even with that, we need to put support in this. So the problem, as a consequence of having, as a consequence of having such a amount of APIs, is that we need some kind of, you know, uh, regulation because. The main problem is to reduce the same API from different different environments, for example. So what do we do? We need to regulate this. We need to put some order in this case. Okay, so now we understand the importance of an API governance in the company, in the corporation especially. Uh, what, what, what's that exactly? So that's a typical question uh, I got when I talk to people about the API governance. Well, the formal definition is it's a community of people API designers, people writing documentation around APIs, implementation around APIs, getting together and sharing information, validating APIs across the company. So you may think, okay, this is like a meta. Well, yeah, I mean, normally if people say I'm attending the meeting, they show up normally. It's not like a meta. <laughs> Those who are used to attend meta. But it's, it's the same principle. These people with a common interest within a company and working together to make everything more efficient. So we are the. You have it. I'm gonna close it if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the API governance are the owners of the guidelines uh, for designing APIs. If you remember the story from the beginning, when I was trying to guess more or less what would be the best approach for naming my endpoint, for naming my parameters, that was like. I think that that could be a good choice. That's not the way to go. So there are guidelines for designing APIs, for documenting APIs, for everything. So the guidelines are there to be used. Same for data dictionary and processes. Imagine you are uh, developing an API, but it's uh, working with um, flight offers, for example. You don't need to think again about how the offer resource would look like. Because I'm pretty sure someone in the company has been working already with offers. So go ahead, release that principle, extend it if necessary, and go and move forward. Oops. And also, it's not only about guidelines, it's not only about processes, but also about support. In case you have a question, you don't know, well, uh, what do you think about using this naming, or what do you think about this API for this specific use? So this is a place to speak. For example, it's super typical that uh, uh, someone who is uh, building an API goes to the, to the governance and say, hey, you have this design, what do you think? Another member says, hey, I've been working on something similar, probably you can reduce my design. So this is the kind of information, this is the kind of situation we, we are looking forward. And that's the, the formal definition of governance. So if you go to an API uh, book, or you uh, look for it on uh, Google or DuckDuckGo, uh, you will see that this is pretty much the same definition. But in Amadeus, uh, we have been working with the governance for many, many years, and we like to define it as the happy governance, happy principle. It means that everyone is smiling in the governance, well, yeah, but happy stands for age of homogeneous, meaning that all APIs should look the same, same design, same documentation. And this is something that we are really pushing everyone working with the governance in the company. A, active. So if you are committed to the governance, if you are uh, an active member, do it. I mean, uh, comments, design, don't be afraid of your opinion, be, be active always. Because in the end, if there are few people only uh, actively uh, contributing to the governance, we may face the problems of a bottleneck for the whole company, and this is something that is already cool, really. <coughs> And pragmatic, think about the customer, think about the API consumer, don't think about yourself, like, hey, 
based on my experience working with APIs, I'm going to say that we should follow this principle or we should follow this design. Maybe not. Maybe you should maybe think about the API consumer and follow the guidelines. Positive, super important. When you are giving your opinion to someone, it's not like, uh, hey, I don't like that. But this, is, this is like, uh, that could be improved. Okay, so people <coughs> like, give your opinion, maybe with a better design, and say, uh, I would say that maybe this will work for you. Take a look and let me know what you think. I can help you. This is the kind of situation that the mood we are looking forward to having in the, in the governance. Yeah, so hungry to learn new things, new technologies, new tools. So whenever you find something new out there, bring that knowledge back to the governance. So why, do, why should I uh, set up a governance in my company? Uh, so we are working, we have been working, as you may think, we have been working with API for many, many years, and we are doing great. We don't need such a thing in my, my company. Well, I'm going to give you two reasons. First one is uh, API producer. As API producer, uh, you need to set up the standards. If you go there and uh, you look for uh, guidelines from uh, good players, you will see that they even publish the, publish the, the rules publicly. So why don't, you do, why don't you follow this in principle in your company? That would be very cool. So for example, errors. If you are dealing with such amount of error that it's difficult sometimes to document, you can maybe keep a list of all of them with an explanation and a specific code and share that with the rest of the community, the rest of the employees in your company when they are building APIs. Same for endpoint and parameters uh, naming, as I was explaining before in my, my story. Improvement, if you find or you see the opportunity on API of uh, doing something great, or hey, this is great, but maybe you, if you modify this, you have something that could work better for the customer. That's something that could be also interesting for the, uh, for the, for the rest of the community. Data dictionaries, it was already explained before, and version units. If you remember the story at the beginning, uh, I was doing the version of my API using the header of the uh, uh, HTTP uh, request, but there are many other options. For example, this was a typical conversion, uh, discussion we had in the governance a long time ago, how to do the version of uh, Amadeus API. Uh, first one is using URLs, so you include it in your uh, part of the UD, or using the header, as I was explaining before, but even using the query parameters. And uh, let's say you, uh, you uh, submit this idea, and you say, hey, uh, I could say, or I would propose to use the version using the, uh, the query parameter. Um, that, let's, let's follow that principle. So the rest of the people should agree on that. And, question that maybe raised out of this topic would be, okay, maybe if the, uh, the user uh, forgets to send the, the version, the parameters, what would be the default one? That's the kind of discussion we are uh, normally having. By the way, which one do you think is uh, the one we have before we? Yeah, exactly, the first one. Uh, second reason is a consumer. A consumer, it's uh, we're talking about having the best API iteration, the best developer experience possible. And how do you achieve that? By having a consistent catalog of APIs. For example, that's the, uh, how the SDK, the Python SDK, we have been released on GitHub. But it, it looks like something like a client of shopping, dot five destination to get, and this is starting the next phase of the API. So as a consumer, if I want to extend this, uh, this SDK with an new API call, I can more or less guess how the uh, implementation could be achieved, okay? And how do we uh, work, how do the governance work in a manage? Well, so we have different entities. The first one is called decision logs. Decision logs uh, is like, uh, imagine we have, oh, imagine we have, no, it's what we have actually. It's a website, so we are in a website out, out of a template, and you wanna share some, for example, you're attending a conference and you wanna share knowledge you have learned in that conference with the rest of the members. You open a decision log and you share that idea, these notes with the rest of the people. Or you can even, I don't know, uh, you have something to be, one idea that can improve the, the way we are working in the governance. You open a decision log and you discuss with the rest of the people that uh, improve it, that thing that could be uh, better than. So, it's technical, but not always technical uh, uh, topics to, to discuss. The interesting thing for you is 
uh, review cards. Review cards is the entity we use for validating APIs in the company. So a review card is, again, it's like a page. So we have a template already defined for each, uh, specific for each single API. So whenever you are ready to, uh, to get the validation from the governance, you go uh, to the internal tool we have, you create a review card, and you start working on it. So in the end, the review card is like a big table with all the information needed by the rest of the members to understand how the API works in terms of the use case of the API, documentation, uh, the flows of the API, why it's important this API, why, why are you try, uh, trying to achieve, why is the UI, why is it, uh, how many data dictionaries is this API using. Also super important samples, because in the end people learn by uh, uh, using samples, and this is critical part in our review part. Uh, and last, super important, is also to attach the software specification. So once you are, uh, you want to get your API validated, the API goes through different phases. So the first one is the construction phase. Uh, you are developing your API, you have everything more or less ready, and you, get, you think, well, I'm ready to get the validation from the governance. So you have like around one to four weeks to uh, create a review card, to fill up all the fields, document, attach documentation, attach the sample, etc. And then you uh, submit this uh, review card to like a pipeline of APIs. In the end, the rest of the people have one week to go through them and start giving feedback. So after that week, if there is no relevant feedback, no relevant modifications to the, to the design, you are ready to go. So your API, your design moves to the last uh, uh, stage is uh, validated. In case you have something to modify, you can go back and repeat the same, uh, same process again. So that's important for you to understand that in the end, having this governance in place is not about putting more processes in your company. So we are trying to be as agile as possible. That's why we have normally one week, which is more of the minimum time for uh, reviewing all the APIs in the pipeline. In the end, as an uh, API designer, what we get out of the, the, the process is three things. This is your review card, your table with the grid validated, your documentation approved, and the swagger specification. Okay. And finally, I'd like to share with you some lessons to learn after two years uh, participating in this uh, programs. First one is uh, don't be afraid of using tools. Uh, if you want, for example, you are documenting your API and you want to share the documentation with the rest of the people, I don't know, using static uh, uh, generator, do it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Swagger generator. I'm a big fan of Redo. Go ahead. I would like to use Microsoft Word for documenting my API. Don't, please. That's <laughs> not <laughs> Don't be afraid of using tooling, but the proactive one. <laughs> Same for testing. If you think that maybe having a small server mocking your backend and that can facilitate the rest of the people to understand really how your API works, Go ahead, don't be afraid even to share that the, the source code of your server with the rest of the community. Be an advocate. Uh, this is super important because when I joined the company, uh, I didn't know that something like that was existing uh, inside the, the corporation. So don't be, at, uh, again, don't be afraid of talking about this with the rest of the people, especially if you are working with APIs. Be an advocate of the governance with this, within the, the company. Spread the word, super important. And also, this is one of the main takeaways, this is not a control entity. I was super frustrated at the beginning saying, who are these people and why do I need a validation from them? But this is completely wrong, because in the end, this is a democratic approach to have a single catalog across the company, well-defined and very well uh, documented. And uh, finally, this is a place to speak. Don't be afraid to raise your hand and say, hey, I think we can improve this in the process we have internally. I think the way we are working with APIs or this design is not the best. Speak up. Don't be afraid of that. Because in the end, the person or the people who are benefiting, uh, uh, taking advantage of this situation are the developers. Thank you very much. I will be around in case you have any questions.